I'm here with ESPN's Field Yates, and Field Chargers finished 9-8 and eight in the 2021 season. What were your overall impressions of last season? First of all, probably the most entertaining team to watch. Uh, you never knew what you're going to get, and the aggressiveness that I know was something that was discussed pretty much every Sunday with Brandon Staley as their head coach was something that uh, as an observer and a fan of watching the game was really fun to see. And um, I understand that sometimes we judge the results, but I was a fan of someone who was convicted by his process. I think Brandon Staley knew exactly what he was doing behind every decision, understood the risks, understood the benefits. Uh, but Justin Herbert is just, I mean, it's an honor to have the opportunity to cover a guy like that who's going to be such a good player for such a long time. And seeing some of the unique pieces they have on this roster, you can see the foundation. I know that we have this issue. It's recency bias where we start to think a little bit too much about the end and not as much about what's going to happen going forward. But uh, this team has the makings of a team that uh, is going to be a real problem in the AFC for a lot of other teams for a long time. Okay, let's talk about a couple of those guys you just okay. mentioned. First, starting with Brandon Staley. You mentioned the aggression, yeah. but overall, just where do you see him building on this team now in his second season as head coach? Well, you know, the first year to come in and win, win nine games, like that was tied for the most amongst any of the first year coaches. So like, he was doing something right. And I think what was clear, and I, you know, I'm, I'm just watching these press conferences on Zoom, so I'm not in the building every day, so I don't have the you know the perfect feel for what kind of individual he was. But I thought he was thoughtful. I thought that everything that was done was not done hastily. Everything that was done was done with a purpose, and you understood that like he thinks about the game in a fairly unique way. I thought the defensive impression that he made was good. I think there's probably even more for them to build off defensively this year. It felt like if you were to a sort of a guess, is this more of an offensive team or more of a defense? It was a more of an offensive team in my estimation this past year. So I think the mark that Brandon will be able to leave in, in this year and going forward will be even more significant on that defensive side of the ball. But uh, fun to watch him coach. And I'm not saying that you know, there's only one way to go about it, but it was fun to watch his mindset. You know, again, I'm not the one that has to, uh, my emotions are not, you know, sort of <laughs> tied to how a fourth down decision Decision goes. I don't want to boil this down to just fourth down decisions, but obviously that was so much of the rhetoric this past year. But I enjoyed watching him. In his press conference had a lot of memorable quotes. I think he thinks about the game in both a very sort of unique and different way, but also he keeps things simple, right? He can sometimes just say, like, here are the things that we need to be fundamentally better at going forward. So um, optimistic about the future for sure. All right. One of those other guys, Justin Herbert, you mentioned the words fun, yeah. exciting. What makes him must see TV? Uh, pretty much everything that he does. Um, but I think that there's like this almost, it's not a disconnect, it's just like on the other end of the spectrum is that like personality wise, he's such a reserved, quiet, selfless guy who has zero interest in the spotlight. And yet everything he does on the football field commands the spotlight. There is the unexpected element. Just if you just had me watch one game from this past year, I might watch not even the Raiders game in week 18, but just the fourth down opportunities from Justin Herbert. There's a tremendous confidence that he has. Uh, obviously, he's, he's not like um, not this like rah-rah quarterback, and yet he seems to inspire such an obvious confidence in his teammates. That part of the reason why, and I, I heard players say this in several different occasions, is that like the reason why you go for it on fourth down so frequently is because you have the best player on the field in most weeks in Justin Herbert. So massive arm, certainly that part is cool. He throws the ball 70 yards down the field to Mike Williams, but uh, there's a lot of stuff in between that. He's a unique athlete. He's a guy that can do so much on second reaction plays. Uh, there is a never say die mentality that you have to adopt defensively if you have any chance against Justin Herbert. And uh, there were enough times where after the game, someone would ask about him and next thing you know, he's complimenting the right tackle or something. So um, that kind of humility is hard to find and I think certainly bodes well for, I can imagine just how much he is revered inside that locker room already. And then lastly, we are here at the Combine. This yeah. is obviously the start of free agency, draft season, all of it. What do the Chargers really need to do to contend in 2022? I think it's a defensive offseason, if I had to imagine. Uh, there's some priorities in-house that I think are always worth taking, a, uh, sort of examining. I, was, I like to start with the in-house stuff because these are the players you know best and you have the best you have the best reference points on, am I investing, am I not investing, uh, what kind of part of the future are they going forward or are they not part of the future going forward? So just as one example, not the only example, but one example is, all right, Derwin James, unique player, probably the best defensive player along with Joey. What kind of investment are we making in him? Because uh, he is now, he's extension eligible, he has been, he is the kind of player that I think is sooner rather than later going to be one of not the highest paid safeties in the NFL. Hammering out deals like that. I thought that, I think that probably, 
I would imagine that people will discuss the run defense uh, a lot because statistically it was not a strength of this roster. Uh, how do you find a couple more big bodies in the middle of that defense that can do some of the dirty work and help create some space for some of those linebackers? And then you need to add a little bit more for glass eating mentality amongst that linebacker group as well. So those will be some of the areas that I think uh, as we go through mock draft season, like pick number 17, be a lot of defensive tackles, guys who are about uh, probably about twice my size, uh, projected to go to the to the Chargers. So I would imagine that a defensive focused offseason would make a lot of sense. Twice their size, five times my size. Thanks, Field. Yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> Thank you. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here.